Hi everyone. Tonight's video is on plant growth patterns, specifically primary and secondary growth. So primary growth is what I'm going to cover first. First of all, I want to look again at our basic plant that we have here. You know that this is an angiosperm because it has a flower. And again, our shoot system is all of the structures above ground and the root system is all of the structures below ground. I also want to talk about a new structure that we haven't talked about before, and that's called the buds. The buds are locations of primary growth. It's where mitosis occurs. You can see here there's an apical bud here and there's another apical bud. There's axillary buds here. Mitosis only occurs in these tissues. There's no mitosis going on in the middle of the stem here, only at the buds. The apical buds are at the ends of a shoot. The axillary buds are located along the shoot here as it's growing up. I can show you a closer picture up here. So an apical bud would be at the end of a shoot and the axillary buds, they're produced as the shoot is growing through the apical bud. So primary growth is growth from these apical and axillary buds and all plants exhibit primary growth. If you have growth from the apical bud alone, your plant is going to be very tall and thin. So you can see here we have an apical bud and we have some axillary buds on the side. But if the apical bud is present, what you see is growth almost exclusively from this apical bud. And the plant gets very, very tall and thin. If you remove the apical bud, that allows the axillary or lateral buds to grow and it becomes bushy as it gets taller. Now it's important that the primary growth from the lateral buds still involves growing up. The plant still gets taller. It's just not from the apical bud if that's been removed. If you remove that, then these lateral or axillary buds start growing in primary growth in the up direction. But you can see this plant, which has had its apical bud removed and is showing growth from the axillary or lateral buds, is much wider, it's much bushier than this plant that is exhibiting only apical growth from the apical bud. So what makes plants grow preferentially from the apical bud? Well, what you see is this apical bud, in addition to being an area where mitosis happens, so growth will go straight up, it actually produces a chemical called auxin that inhibits the growth from these lateral buds. It's saying, no, 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 you can't grow. Only I get to grow straight up. And if this bud is present, this chemical is actively inhibiting these lateral buds or axillary buds. If this apical bud is removed, and in nature it can be removed by an animal nibbling on it, in your garden it might be removed by pruning. If that is removed, not only does the, the plant not grow from that apical bud, but that negative inhibitory signal, that auxin is not produced. So now the lateral or axillary buds are free to grow, and that's where you get a bushier plant. Why would a plant want to grow tall before it gets really bushy? Why would you bother to have this apical bud at all? I mean, both of them allow them to grow up, but if you have the apical bud being active, then it grows really tall, really fast and thin. Well, of course, it's a race to the sun for the plants. A plant wants to get very, very tall before it allows itself to get bushy because it wants to be the first to get sunlight. If its neighbor is taller, then the plant could be in the shade from the neighbor. What else influences the direction of primary growth? Well, gravity. If you take a potted plant and you tip it on the side, what you will find is that the roots will still bend and grow down and the shoots will bend and grow up. No matter what orientation you put this plant in, if you keep turning it over, the roots will always go up and the shoot roots will always go down. I'm sorry, the shoots will go up and the roots will go down. We call this gravitropism. And you can try this at home with a potted plant. There's also something called phototropism, and that's where plants will bend to grow towards the light. What about secondary growth? What is secondary growth? Well, secondary growth is the growth in the width of an individual stalk. Secondary growth is what forms wood. 
Gymnosperm and dicot angiosperms are the only ones that do secondary growth. Monocots do not do secondary growth. You will never see grass, which is a monocot, forming wood. In order to show secondary growth, a plant has to have wood. So if we look at a pine tree, the stems are actually wood. That is the result of secondary growth. If you look at a stalk of a rose, this is actually wood. And woodworkers can actually make things out of rose wood. So if we looked at this stalk, and we did what's called a cross section. So let's cut this in half right here and then look down into the middle of it. What would we see? Well, on the very outside, of course, is the bark that you would see. Just inside of the bark is the phloem. And the phloem is the vascular tissue that transports the sugars. Have you ever noticed that sometimes the bark will have a little scratch in it and out will leak some sap? And it's a really sticky, if you get sap on your hands, it's incredibly hard to get it off. Sap is phloem. Phloem is just inside the bark. And the reason it's sticky is that it has sugars in it produced by photosynthesis. The next layer in is the xylem, which is the part of the vascular system that's composed only of dead material and is lined with lignin and it allows our plants to grow very rigid and upright. The xylem transports water in just one direction from the roots to the shoots and that's inside of the phloem. And so this is what you would see in a cross section the first year that a, that a plant that exhibited secondary growth, so either a gymnosperm or a dicot angiosperm, was growing. Let's look at year two. In year two, again, we would still see the bark. Just inside of the bark would be the phloem. So again, sap can leak out of the bark. On the inside is the xylem. But we have now two layers of xylem. We have a new layer of xylem that forms every year. The old layer of xylem then gets dried up and begins to form what we call the heart wood of the plant. The newest layer of xylem is the only active layer that is transporting water from the roots to the shoots. There's no growth in the phloem. The phloem just keeps getting moved out. So secondary growth adds layers of xylem each year, pushing the phloem out wider and forming the wood towards the interior of this plant. So you should know that all plants have primary growth, and that's due to mitosis in the apical and lateral or axillary buds. The direction of all primary growth is up towards the sun. If the apical bud is present, it will dominate, resulting in a tall, thin plant. We call this apical dominance. If the apical bud is missing, either due to pruning or removal by an animal, the lateral or axillary buds will then start to grow. They will again grow in the up direction. The plant still gets taller, but there are many of these axillary buds. So as the plant is getting taller, it's also becoming bushy. Secondary growth only occurs in dicot angiosperm and gymnosperm. Secondary growth results in the formation of wood. Secondary growth makes the individual stalks and trunk of the plant wider by adding a new layer of xylem each year. So that's all for tonight.